Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for April 15th, 2024, Tax Day. Keep in mind when you listen to what I'm saying that your tax dollars are being fundled, funneled into the bottomless pit of the military industrial financial corporations who are taking the money, putting it in the hands of Ukrainian kleptocrats and the oligarchical establishment in the United States supposedly to protect you. And they're also funding unproductive green projects. So it's time for us to end this kind of fraud. And that was part of the reason why we had a conference this last Saturday, which I'm gonna be discussing on, on the Oasis plan of Lyndon LaRouche and why it is that we need a change in thinking underlying our government, both in the United States and Western Europe. So the importance of the OASIS plan was made clear in the discussion, but the backdrop to it is equally important. You have the Israeli-Iran back and forth with Israel striking the Iranian consulate in Damascus and then Iran retaliating with drones and missile attack. Now what's striking, if you listen to this, is the commentators who say Iran is the threat, Iran is the danger, ignoring the fact that it was Israel that violated international law by striking the Iranian consulate in Damascus, which under international law is Iranian sovereign territory. Why is there no denunciation of that? Instead, there is an incitement for Iran to respond and now for Israel to respond against Iran and the danger that this will become a larger regional war and possibly even a world war. Now it's in this context that the Schiller Institute had the conference on the OASIS plan. And this brings up a, a, a debating point that was discussed at the conference and is discussed all the time. Why have an economic project when there's not peace? Don't you have to have a political settlement first? Now, the problem with that is that there's no basis for trust between the, the parties involved. There's been 75 years of war, both full-scale war and irregular warfare, constantly. There's an Israeli occupation, which has suppressed the rights of the Palestinian people who are entitled by international law to have an independent state. And that's been rejected. Uh, sometimes by the Palestinians, but increasingly by the Israelis, who are whittling down the territory that's available for a Palestinian state. Israel has functioned in this capacity as an Anglo-American sledgehammer, not just against the Palestinians, but now increasingly against the BRICS, as you have a number of new members of the BRICS that are in the Southwest Asia region. And so, We've seen the failure of the West to support the independent Palestinian state, despite the fact that it's guaranteed by international law. So the question is, how do you produce trust for a political settlement when it's clear that there's no trust between the parties and there's no push coming from outside to achieve a breakthrough? In fact, we see the, the West uh, occasionally crying crocodile tears over the tens of thousands of civilians killed in Gaza by the Israelis, but not doing anything to stop it. Now, this is the problem with the political settlement. Promises have been made, promises have been broken repeatedly. The best chance was Oslo, where the idea was put forward in the economic annexes that both sides should engage in economic projects to create new rivers of fresh water, desalinated water, that would provide ample fresh water to green the desert, and that would benefit not only Palestinians and Israelis, but also other neighbors in the region. And by extension, this approach could be applied almost anywhere in the world where there's shortages of, of water or other resources and animosity between neighbors. What LaRouche said after the Oslo Accord was signed with its economic annexes, for joint economic development projects, LaRouche said, move the earth for these joint development policies. 
show the mutual benefit and use that as an incentive for peace, peace through development. That was LaRouche's idea, and that's what was presented last Saturday at the conference of the Schiller Institute. Now, what's interesting is that the, the idea explicitly attacks the geopolitical confrontation, which has been the policy of the Anglo-Americans since the beginning of the 20th century to prevent there from being a peaceful resolution in the Middle East. Because you create a zero-sum game where one side's benefit is the other side's loss. A lose-lose situation or a win-lose situation, but it's lose-lose for both sides because there's no peace that's explicit from that. So what was interesting is that the conference this last Saturday, there was open expressions of support for the idea of the Oslo plan and discussion, a dialogue over how you can do it when there's a lack of a political settlement. And I'm going to be linking the, the conference video at the bottom of the description page for you to watch and participate in this for yourself. And what was interesting is the open expressions of support for the, Os the OASIS plan. There were two Palestinian ambassadors, and both of them stuck to the line that, well, we need a political agreement, but both of them expressed open admiration and support for the idea of the OASIS plan, the idea of peace through development. A statement from the South African ambassador to Mexico who spoke, and she spoke of the importance of mutual development as the basis for peace. A representative from the embassy of Belarus, the United States, openly endorsed the, the OASIS plan. And a Russian diplomatic representative from their UN mission also spoke very favorably of the, the uh, OASIS plan. There, in, in addition, there were numerous representatives of water engineering firms, construction firms, uh, the, who discussed the plan, including its potential incorporation in the Belt and Road Initiative. So in other words, there was a broad discussion of how to proceed with this plan to achieve the goal, the joint goal of ending the fighting and enmity, but more importantly, cementing a sustainable peace based on mutually beneficial economic development, the idea of the peace of Westphalia. And that's the way you have to approach what otherwise is an insoluble contradiction between different sides' claims to land and the fighting that's gone on over that over the last 75 years, but which actually was instigated by the British intervention with the Balfour Declaration and before that the Sykes-Picot Agreement to carve up the Middle East between Britain and France. Now, also there were LaRouche independent candidates, Diane Sayre and Jose Vega. Diane, a candidate for Senate, uh, Vega, a candidate for the U.S. Congress from the Bronx. And their message is, we have to take power away from this military-industrial-financial complex because this is the war hawk faction in the Congress in both parties. And instead, pursue a policy of peace through development to retool the military productive sector and turn it into infrastructure development and new technologies. So in this context, let me call your attention to a warning piece that appeared in the Wall Street Journal on Sunday. The headline was, American bonds are getting harder to sell. And it's essentially an obvious point. Who wants to buy American debt when the debt is going through the roof where the interest rates are remaining high, but the ability to pay it begins to come into question. The, and what's the purpose of the U.S. debt? To fund the imperial war machine, to uh, carry out a war, which now is a war against the BRICS, a war against the development of the global south, and support for wars in Ukraine and Southwest Asia, and a coming war with China. So we see them fanning the flames of war, the, the military industrial financial complex through the media, through their congressional representatives. Uh, and when it comes to the Israel-Iran situation, by 
placing universal blame on Iran, ignoring Israel's violation. It shows the United States with its uh, pretensions to supporting a rules-based order to be a land of stinking hypocrisy. I don't think that represents most of the people who watch these videos, but it certainly represents most of your uh, representatives in the Congress and um, members of the permanent bureaucracy of State Department, the diplomatic corps, intelligence, the Defense Department, and so on. In other words, the military industrial complex. So I urge you, watch the Schiller Institute conference from last Saturday and see a genuine dialogue, not total agreement, but agreement to discuss how we can solve these problems by moving to a new level of thinking and overcome the dictatorial pro-war incitement that's coming from the supporters of the so-called rules-based order. So join our campaign. I'm also going to be appending my most recent article on who's behind permanent war. I urge you, watch the video, read the article, have discussions, provoke people, have arguments. That's the whole basis of a constitutional republic, not uniform agreement. That's not democracy, but the ability to, to have different opinions and discuss them out in free and open dialogue. That's what's missing. That's what the military industrial financial complex is trying to suppress. That's what's missing from the campaign, which is turning into a, a circus, the presidential campaign. But with our conference, we took a big step forward to bringing the United States back into dialogue with the rest of the world. And I think that's of crucial importance right now. So thanks for joining me today. When you send off your tax dollars, remember what I said and be sure to share this video. Thank you. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, You'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.